Hi there, Simon from Simon Woods at Adopt.com. Uh, I have uh, four French sparkly wines in front of me. Not a bottle of champagne in sight. Um, what I have got is uh, there are various places around France where they uh, they label their sparkling wine Cremant de blah blah blah. Um, I haven't got a Cremant de Bourgogne. I haven't got a Cremant de Jura. Uh, but I've got Cremants from from the four of the places. Uh, as I said, there may be more than four, I'm not sure, that are allowed to put, uh, uh, to use the term creme on, on their sparkling wine. Anyway, um, four different regions. Uh, how have I organised them? Um, well, I, I don't know whether I've got them in the right order, because I've never, only just opened them. I managed to open them all without uh, uh, them all spilling all, uh, all over myself. And also, I followed the advice on the back of this bottle. Attention, this bottle contains pressure. Point top away from people when opening. I did that. Anyway. Enter the wines. First one is uh, Sauvignon, that's the producer, Cremant de Loire, um, Brut, uh, and not sure what the, the grapes are here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's quite a bit of um, Chenin Blanc in there, uh, but there may also be some uh, Cabernet Franc. I can't remember what else they're allowed in there. They may be uh, allowed a little bit of Chardonnay. Uh, I don't think they'll put too much Sauvignon into, uh, uh, into a sparkling wine like this, but anyway, uh, let's give this one a whirl. It smells crisp and uh, as yes, as if it's going to have a, a green apple peel tang to it. Uh, it smells like it's going to be on that bracing side. Uh, whenever you've got uh, Chenin Blanc um, in, in the Loire Valley, uh, it's always going to be that uh, fight uh, of acidity versus richness because Chenin's got all that acidity. Uh, here, um, it, it may be that they've uh, left a little bit of, uh, of um, well, not residual sugar, but uh, put dosage in there to round out that... Uh, uh, that crispness and that uh, that a green apple edge that might have some people going and having their buttocks clench. Anyway, let's try it. Yes, there's a, uh, there, there is this green apple um, note to it, but then there's this honeyed richness as well. Um, and uh, they've managed to retain the crispness, uh, but just around out any of the slightly gawkier edges that, uh, that would make it a, a bit of a, as I said, a buttock clenching experience. You're left with something that uh, um, is... Maybe uh, that's still a little bit too tart to uh, have it by itself, but I wouldn't mind setting into that with some uh, um, with some smoked salmon or something like that, because um, it's got this quite a rich flavour, uh, but this zestiness. And what's good about it, sometimes when you've got um, sparkling wines that have got a rich in flavour, if the fruit is too loud, if it's too big and uh, and butch, uh, then the, the the bubbles almost accentuate it, and you're left with too much of a good thing. But I think they've uh, I think they've done it pretty well there. Second one, uh, we are way down in the south of France here. Terroir La Baume, Saint Paul, Cremont de Limoux. Uh, so not way down in the south of France. Uh, Limoux is that bit. Um, it's the uh, on the Atlantic side of the Languedoc, if that makes sense. Uh, it's the uh, if you know where Carcassonne is, there it's the bit to to the south of Carcassonne. Uh, so it's quite high up. Uh, and they've got quite a lot of limestone in the soil, which means that uh, uh, they've, uh, it, it's, it, the, yes, there's some Chenin Blanc there, as there, um, uh, as we've, we, we saw in that Loire one, but uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are also planted there. I don't know the proportions here, there will be something either on this webpage or on YouTube where you'll be able to, um, uh, to, to find out all those pertinent details. Anyway, let's just try it. Well, it smells like it's going to be a richer, rounder, um, fleshier, sweeter, fruited uh, experience. Yes, the fruit here feels a lot riper. It uh, doesn't have that uh, crisp, um, slightly tart bite. Well, I don't think it's going to, that, uh, that, that, that the first one had. Is there going to be enough crispness? Sometimes you, you have the, uh, it can, some things can be too crisp, but sometimes they can be not crisp enough. Here, there is a, uh, it very much feels like it's on that Chardonnay side. Um, that slightly toasted nut character, a little bit of pineapple in there, but it's not out and out pineapple chunk, uh, the, the juice that you get in a tin of pineapple chunks. Um, it feels like it's going to have um, good flavour, uh, but not too loud a flavour. Yeah, rounded, richer, creamier. Um, and it's funny testing those two side by side. If anything, I'd like a little bit uh, less Christmas on the first one and maybe a little bit more crispness on here. There is that really rich round flavour, a uh, slightly buttery edge in there too. Um, and um, it makes me think that uh, I, I'm just wondering whether this is from a, a rather warm year where things maybe ripened a little bit too much for the finest of sparkling wines. Good, honest flavour, 
um, and a bit of a crowd pleaser, nothing wrong with pleasing crowds, uh, but um, I, I, maybe I'd like a little bit more subtlety. It's, it's good, but uh, not great. Uh, I just about prefer it to the first one at the moment. Hmm, I like it. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have got Sexy Bottle here, Arthur Metz, uh, since 1904. It says 1904 on, that's not the vintage. Uh, this, like the previous two, doesn't have a vintage on it, and um, they may be from vintages, but uh, they're, they're uh, for, to all intents and purposes, they're, they're not making a big show of uh, how, how old it is. Um, so, grapes here, there might be a little bit of, um, not quite all of the Alsace, um, grapes in there. The ones that they tend to use for the sparkling wines are uh, the Pinot family, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, uh, maybe not Pinot Noir a little bit, um, and there's also one called Pinot Auxerrois that uh, ends up in there. Sometimes they'll use uh, some of the others, but I, I think those, they, they're major on the Pinot family for their sparklers. And this smells like it's sitting halfway between the, the two of them. It's not as rich and ripe uh, as the uh, Limou one was, it's not as crisp and uh, on that tart side as the uh, as the Loire one was. It's um, it's they're probably the the most muted of the the two. It's not gushing out uh, with bags and bags of flavour, but it feels like there's um, more subtle, uh, maybe a little bit more of the toasty elegance that uh, there was a little bit of it showing in the in the Creme de Limoux, but there seems to be a bit more here. Some creaminess. There's a little touch of spice hanging around in the background, maybe that's a bit of Pinot Gris, slightly fat Pinot Gris, uh, with this um, almost plummy character coming through. Uh, and then you've got this nice dry palette, with a, bit of, a little bit of toastiness on the finish. My favourite of the three, um, and um, quite classy wine. Good thing about it is it's, it doesn't try, it's not trying to taste like uh, uh, champagne, it's not afraid to have that little bit of, uh, of spice and stoniness that um, says I'm from Alsace, so uh, nine more, three, three fine, fine ones so far. Let's see how we get on when we get on to the pink one, which is, um, uh, we're over in Bordeaux now. Uh, there's uh, Cremant de Bordeaux isn't uh, as popular as uh, obviously the reds and uh, isn't as popular as the whites, but um, this is Calvé's Cremant de Bordeaux, uh, de Bordeaux, blah, 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 Cremant de Bordeaux, uh, 2014. Um, does it say anything about grapes on here? No, I can't really see. Uh, but uh, let's just dive in and see where we get to. Well, sometimes when you smell uh, some pink sparkling wine, uh, you're not sure that there is any uh, anything in there that would make them pink. Here there is. There's like a little bit of, um, uh, I think it's a plummy black currant character. Uh, I don't know whether that's a powers of auto-suggestion thinking I'm in Bordeaux, but there's something here that is definitely of the uh, red wine, uh, from the red wine family rather than white wine with a little bit of food colouring in. And it's not so much those red berries, it is those, uh, yeah, the more the, the Bordeaux style of flavours. But um, it's, not, it's not as loud as they, it would be in, uh, uh, in, in, in a typical uh, red Bordeaux. Um, it smells like it's going to be simple but honest and tasty. That's what it is. Um, it, it is it's not uh, great wine, uh, it's honest wine. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, earthy black currant in there, it's freshness. Um, it's refreshing. Uh, I'd uh, I like to have that with a little bit of food. I'd even like to have that uh, maybe uh, with some cold roast beef. Um, but um, it's 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 another it's another facet of uh, a French sparkling wine. Um, I I don't think uh, the the the, the Cremant de Bordeaux is is ever going to stand up and say we are the best wines of the region. Uh, but um, I look at um, here the the Alsace and, and the Limoux. And uh, I think that they've got quite a bit to say for themselves. And uh, I, I like the Sauvignon, the, uh, the, the Loire one, but um, there, are, there are some really terrific uh, uh, Loire sparklers around. This is a good one, but not as good as the best of the region. But um, nice, tidy quartet and interesting and because you can't drink champagne all the time. Some people try, but um, not for very long. See you soon.